At 26 years old, I've been married to my 29-year-old husband for almost three years. Throughout this time, it's been apparent that my in-laws, including my husband's two 23-year-old twin sisters and his 21-year-old brother, haven't warmed up to me. Even my mother-in-law seems distant. I've always tried to bridge this gap, despite not understanding why they seem to harbor negative feelings toward me. Recently, I took it upon myself to plan my mother-in-law's 50th birthday party. Despite my husband's warning that his family might not appreciate my efforts, I was determined to mend the relationship. I'm someone who values connections, and the idea that these people didn't like me for no clear reason troubled me deeply. I meticulously organized the celebration at my mother-in-law's favorite restaurant, where she and her late husband frequented. I handled all the arrangements, from the food to the decorations, ensuring everything aligned with her preferences. Despite trying to involve my husband's siblings, they showed no interest and left the entire planning on my shoulders, even refusing to contribute financially. When the day arrived, my husband and I visited his mother to extend the invitation. To my surprise, his siblings were already there, appearing startled by our presence. After some small talk, I disclosed the plans for her celebration. When my husband acknowledged that it was my effort, not his, she suddenly became cold, souring the atmosphere. Confused, I detailed how I had meticulously arranged the event, hoping she would appreciate my gesture. Instead, she delivered a falsely sweet thank you before informing me that I wouldn't be attending. Shocked, I asked her why. When I asked why, she explained that she wanted her 50th to be an intimate family affair, extending that designation only to relatives, not me. She essentially asked me to keep away. My husband and I were stunned. And in that moment, I realized he had been right all along. She was never going to appreciate any effort I put forth. The smirk on my in-laws' faces infuriated me further. I couldn't contain my frustration. I stood up and bluntly told her to go to hell, warning her that if she showed up the next day, I'd have security remove her. That wiped the smugness off their faces. She accused me of being cold and cruel, but I just laughed in response. I was fed up and made it clear that my decision was final. Her attempts to make me feel guilty by crying fell on deaf ears. I was too enraged to care. On the drive home, I tried to cancel the reservation, but it was too late. My husband seemed uncomfortable, choosing not to comment much except for saying I did the right thing before stepping out for a smoke. He's never been one to delve into family conflicts, and I appreciated him not making me feel worse about ignoring his advice. Since I'd already paid for everything, I canceled the last-minute invites, irking some of my mother-in-law's friends. Instead, I called upon my own friends to salvage the situation and make the evening enjoyable. My husband and I invited some of his friends too, deciding to turn the occasion into our own celebration. We hastily removed the decorations before they arrived and ended up having an absolute blast. I uploaded all the pictures when I returned home today. My sister-in-law texted me, upset that I repurposed the venue for my own use after canceling my mother-in-law's birthday party. She accused me of selfishness, highlighting how much the place meant to my mother-in-law. I don't feel overwhelmingly remorseful about my actions, believing my decision was justified. But I'm unsure if I made the right call. Am I the antagonist for canceling the party after being told I wasn't welcome there? Update. I shared the message from my sister-in-law with my husband and asked if I should apologize to his family. Surprisingly, he staunchly advised against it. In fact, he suggested cutting ties entirely, a significant step considering his family often relied on him, especially financially. He's successful and runs his own company, so withdrawing support meant his mother would have to rely on his less dependable siblings who frequently changed jobs and leaned on him for money. I tried dissuading him from this drastic action, sensing there might be more behind his decision. Over time, I noticed his family growing distant from him, even during our dating phase. Despite his efforts to invite them over for dinner, they always found excuses to avoid it. I felt partly responsible, fueling my eagerness to build a connection with my in-laws, 
hoping it would help my husband reconnect with his family. There seems to be something deeper my husband hasn't shared. He's not the type to abandon family. Earlier, he emphasized the importance of family. Making this sudden decision, while understandable given my recent treatment by my mother-in-law, highly uncharacteristic for him. I'm determined to understand the situation fully. I don't want him to be unhappy or resentful toward me in the future. I'm really hoping that he'll finally feel comfortable enough to open up and share what led him to take such a drastic step. Now, for the second update. After persistently urging him, my husband finally unveiled why he's decided to sever ties with his family after all these years. When he was 21, his father passed away, leaving his mother, who had never worked, and his siblings who were all in school dependent on him. With the inheritance his father left, it wasn't enough to sustain them, so he took on the responsibility of becoming the family's breadwinner. He toiled tirelessly day and night until around 23 when he secured investors for his startup. His success propelled him from just scraping by to thriving financially. However, his family began to grow lazy and materialistic, heavily relying on his newfound success. Despite feeling obliged to support them in his father's absence, he noticed their dependency increasing. Additionally, they treated his past girlfriends poorly, convinced that outsiders would distract him from his familial duties. When they realized I wasn't going to be driven away so easily, their annoyance grew, and they attempted to poison my husband against me. This led to clandestine fights and arguments during our dating period, where his family pushed him to end our relationship, but he remained resolute about marrying me. As time passed, they resorted to emotional manipulation. Even after years of trying to separate us, they continued to ask him for money. When the birthday incident occurred, his sister attempted to guilt trip me, while his mother called him to emotionally manipulate him into leaving me due to the perceived insult. Learning about this, my husband reached his breaking point. He realized it was time to let go. I'm still in disbelief at how his family put him through all this, despite him being the sole support for years. My respect for them has evaporated due to their sheer greed. I'm grateful I stood by my husband despite their efforts to break us apart and exploit him for money. I couldn't care less about his financial status. My love for him stems from who he is, not his bank balance. Knowing the entire story now, I'm astounded he endured this and kept it hidden from me for so long, trying to shield my feelings. I had hoped for a positive connection with my in-laws, but he understood it was an unrealistic expectation. I believe he's making the right call now. His family deserves to be cut off for their incredible selfishness, greed, and lack of respect for the man who supported them against all odds. In today's update, my husband finally made the call to his mother, informing her that unless they change their ways, he doesn't want to hear from her or his siblings. They'll need to find their own means of income as he won't support them indefinitely, as I had anticipated. Predictably, their reaction was explosive. Even without the phone on loudspeaker, I could hear my mother-in-law screaming at my husband. Their argument echoed through the room as I was present while my husband conversed. Predictably, my mother-in-law attempted to shift blame onto me, accusing me of influencing his decision to sever ties and disrupt their family. She even asserted that my husband shouldn't allow himself to be swayed by his wife, which struck me as ironic coming from her. My husband defended me vehemently, emphasizing that his siblings, as adults, need to secure stable employment instead of relying on him. She resorted to accusing him of letting wealth and influence get to his head, insinuating that I might be the one manipulating him into cutting ties. It was a classic tactic, manipulation and emotional blackmail, to maintain control over him. However, I refused to let this manipulation continue. Seeing my husband growing visibly distressed and teary-eyed due to their tactics was difficult. As things intensified, I realized the depth of what she and her other children had been doing. I couldn't stand seeing my husband so distraught. I chose to step in and address the situation. I firmly informed my mother-in-law that my husband had made his decision. If she and her children didn't align with our expectations soon, they risked losing his support indefinitely.
The choice was theirs. Respect us and remain in our lives or persist in their materialistic and selfish ways and be cut off completely. After asserting this, I hung up, muted notifications on my husband's phone to grant him a break from their messages and allowed him time to calm down. We put our phones aside to watch a movie and distract ourselves. In the next update, after enduring harassment, my mother-in-law turned her attention to me. Following the movie, my husband resumed some pending work, and as I checked my phone, I found numerous missed calls and offensive texts from my in-laws. I anticipated this behavior and documented their messages without engaging. While handling work emails, my mother-in-law called again. Accidentally answering, she proceeded to hurl insults at me, making baseless accusations about my character and intentions towards my husband. I chose not to react and simply stated that her accusations reflected her own actions. I expressed satisfaction that my husband was finally liberating himself from freeloaders like them. Subsequently, I blocked my mother-in-law and his siblings on all possible platforms to halt their harassment. It's disheartening how low some people stoop to evade responsibility. I refrained from telling my husband about his mother's call to avoid causing him further stress, but I'm prepared to involve him if their harassment continues. They have no right to disturb our peace. Nearly two weeks later, my mother-in-law, accompanied by her children, arrived at our doorstep demanding an explanation for our actions. Despite protests that I wasn't family and shouldn't be present, I stood my ground, reminding them they were intruding under our roof and had no authority to dictate my presence. I was caught in a difficult situation when my husband's family showed up, bombarding him with accusations and insults. Seeing my husband's distress, I stepped in. Knowing his gentle nature, I knew he wouldn't defend himself against their manipulative claims. I urged him to compose himself while I confronted his family. They launched into a tirade, accusing my husband of abandoning them for my sake and claiming he was neglecting his familial duties just to please his wife. Their words were a storm of accusation and disrespect. I couldn't stand by as they berated my husband, accusing me of being a gold digger and him of being selfish. My patience snapped. I lashed out, calling them out for being lazy and incapable, surviving on my husband's generosity while offering nothing in return. They were stunned into silence, unable to counter my accusations. Taking advantage of their momentary shock, I demanded they leave before I involved the authorities for trespassing. They departed, but my mother-in-law persisted emotionally manipulating my husband by implying his deceased father would be disappointed in his actions. Witnessing his emotional breakdown after they left, I spent hours consoling him, feeling regret for ever attempting to mend our relationship with them. After their departure, I ensured they had no way to contact us and suggested we seek legal advice, knowing they might continue their harassment. Sadly, my prediction was accurate. Within days, my mother-in-law sent a legal notice, falsely claiming my husband had embezzled funds from the family estate to start his business. This false allegation tarnished his reputation and affected his company. However, we fought back. It took nearly two weeks, but we disproved their lies. They were found guilty of defamation, resulting in a hefty fine against them. The rest of the family distanced themselves from their deceitful actions, and my in-laws, previously reliant on my husband's support, now scrambled to find jobs to sustain themselves. This episode, while challenging, allowed us to break free from their toxic grip. My husband and I are happier without their influence, and I'm determined to keep it that way. We're moving forward, leaving their drama behind.